I tell you, yeah. I did some things with this green screen. Yeah. <laughs> I did some things. Oh, Lord, why did for it? What you done did? I did, some, on ice. I did some things. This before I put it on ice. This before I was holy. I was a sinner. <laughs> Not a sinner. I was a sinner. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have a good day today? I did. I had a wonderful day. And I had to apologize because he called. I was at work. So I was kind of like, I've tried to to leave on time. I don't know if my response, because when you work in healthcare, you work with a lot of just, it's it's, it's a stressful job you know what i'm saying and they very yeah. tedious especially when you're working for the white folks mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i love white mm-hmm. people but <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you gotta put on that fake voice you gotta Ooh, cold, you gotta, cold. gotta acclimate you gotta cold you gotta acclimate cold switch uh, you gotta do yeah. all that mm-hmm. you gotta do yeah. all that so I was like, okay. and then I want to leave on time so I can go sleep because I'm oh, I'm a middle aged black man. Are you middle aged? Oh, I thought middle aged was 50s. Oh, that's half century. That ain't no middle. <laughs> that's middle aged. Oh, that's, that's middle like, aged. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so I'm, I'm not middle aged. Well, no, I'm, you're just a uh, a, a war veteran. Okay. okay war veteran. Veteran. <laughs> Baby, these bones, these bones say otherwise. Baby, these bones feel <laughs> middle aged. Oh God! I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> you, know, you know, Wiley is retired from the military, combat veteran. Okay. Been- okay. I okay. put that. You know, okay. I put. I put that uniform on. The only thing I regret is not stealing my card. That that <laughs> military ID for the benefits. Everybody else was stealing yeah. their military ID. I said no. Uh, that's the only regret that I have not stealing that ID, that military ID. But I still get up there. Anybody serves in the military, I get up and I walk like I was in the military. I got hurt. I got, I got hurt in the first tour in Iraq. I get up. You know when you go to the airport where they say anybody served in the military, anybody with kids, anybody disabled, I fit all three. I get up there and I lip up this step front. Oh, man. Oh, man. I am weak, Shout out to them good oh, white God. folks. Carol, I saw your breaking your groundbreaking story over there. Which one? About uh Miss the girl with the goats who was getting knocked between the washer and dryer. Oh you my had her, God. her boyfriend over there, the one who was knocking her. She face. called in last night too. And she it. wanted to Yeah. Uh she called in last night and you know I had to ask her why you was online picking on them other women that was getting beat up by the same man. She ain't had no answer. Listen, because you know. when you're not getting knocked between the washer and dryer, it's a blessing. <laughs> you know, I was, I, but most, but so you tell me the dude was doing it to previous women and she still gave him a chance? Yes. Yeah. Listen, he, he, he beat on other women and she was in the car going off. And at this time, she had been knowing him. Like they had been actually like in a sexual relationship for like two weeks at this point, but they've been knowing each other for a while because they live in the same area. And she was sitting in the car. Going off, oh uh, yeah, because he beat me. Don't mean he doing that shit to me. Like she just kept saying it, kept saying it, kept saying it. And the next thing you know, she woke up with her face swole, and it's like she had crumbs in the crack of her eyes, right between the top and the bottom of the eyelid, because of him, you know, whooping her. But he said he threw a bottle at her, but I think it was more than a bottle. No, he you know? threw hand, foot, and fist. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, it was really oh, oh my gosh, but that's a typical black woman. No, that's not, mm. no, that's black. not typical black. That, but he that, did say that, she that, like that. That. he said she liked to beat on him, punch on him, just hit him. She's a drunk, he said she was a drunk. <laughs> he, he said that was last year. He, he, did. he did say she was a drunk, you know. Typical, but he said she's typical. Was a drunk. Typical. No, go but ahead, some, well, but some. But some Women like to get that type of behavior, though. Some black women, not all, they like it when you touch them up, rough them up, pow, pow them in the face. That's who mm-hmm. some women, t- some women is accustomed to that type of lifestyle. They kind of like shock and it scare them when you treat them with dignity and respect. Bring them right. flowers, you know, pull up. They like it. B, 
shut up with your raggedy a they are accustomed to that toxic energy and they are, they are some women are accustomed of getting slapped your husband yeah. or your boyfriend don't really love you until he pow pow I, you talking I, about that ghetto love that ghetto love you know what i'm saying i remember i remember i saw this story not the story i witnessed this with my own two eyes my sister mm-hmm. gave her boyfriend her car and he she wanted her car back i mean he had it for like months let's just say weeks and she yeah. wanted the car back he gave it he punched her in the stomach in front of her two daughters i'm standing out the window whatever my mom's standing out the window she's under the influence we we all see it right and didn't get out didn't rush for her safety because that's what she accustomed to so to go to the go to her page or she attack oh yeah okay that's how we do and she was giggling with her friends like oh this ain't nothing so because i always ask myself I said, why you never bring home a good old mechanic uh, 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 a welder, uh, uh, somebody that worked for the real you. She loved the thug, so I don't judge her because she loved that lifestyle. So, in a certain sector of women, them the type of dudes that they like. Mm-hmm. Trailer park ghetto. Yeah, park. ghetto. Some women like that. It it, it, it makes them scary. Only as Being a good guy like myself, they will run over me. Because their use of that ghetto lifestyle, pump me up with babies, leave me, walk over me. You, 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 you're not, your heart and mind is not ready for a good man. You say you want a good man, but when you get it, you don't know how to act, react to it because that's foreign to you. Because your mama got whooped, your granny got whooped, everybody else, you got whooped. And so you're not used of just a good, hard working, intelligent black man. You're not ready for it. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like yeah. this when it comes to those ter- certain types of situations. Um, I do think some women are into the aggressive, raw, you know, some men are into right. it too. They like that toxic, mm-hmm. we just fight on the mm-hmm. on the days that end with why. You know what I'm saying? They're they're into that. I call it that Facebook love, you know, where the people yeah. go back and forth. It, that don't have no color because I've seen the, the pale people do it too. They like right. Yeah, that's a fact. I agree, and I feel also too. Uh, when I re- re- did your interview, when I was listening to it, I said, "Man, you have every right to interview these people, but where do these people come from to tell their business?" And they yeah. say it probably on an international. Your your brand is much mm-hmm. stronger um, than TMZ. Um, you have a strong <laughs> brand, and they spill their business. They talk about their business. Oh, it's muted, uh, Couture Bay. Uh, okay, yeah, they talk about their business. They do all all that stuff, and, and you just sit down calmly and get the tea. Yeah, yeah, and, and like I said, that that it comes from because people want to come to media that they can trust. People already know I'm gonna tell their story if it's some receipts and proof to it. You know what I'm saying? I get a lot of stories, Wally, but not everybody make it because it be it it, it don't be true. You know what I'm saying? Some of it be trying to get back at people. I have a lot of disgruntled people. You know, people trying to come and get back at their friends. I don't do those stories. You know what I'm saying? I deal with stories that deal with people that are either of public importance, public figures, or something that has happened to the point that I think the public need to know about this. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? And people people know that, you know, when they come to me, I'm going to tell their story if it's a story and if it's a legitimate story. But I do a lot of research and a lot of vetting before I, you know, before I bring stuff on. Now with this situation, you know, this was just something that was on the internet that I picked up, but I also tried to reach out to Jolie and she did not want to talk. But when I reached out to this guy recently after he posted a picture of her naked and him mm. online, and I'm like, Jolie is back with this dude after you were set up online and said this man threw a bottle at you beat you she got up out of her bed drove all the way to his house he jumped out the window she caught him at another woman's house he jumped out the window this stuff happened last year though but it's so much stuff that she put online that she was going through with this man and she was back with him so he was in the comments on this recent story i did about them back together he stole a car destroyed her house she was on live crying said he destroyed her house and stole a car well, he was in the comments and I was like, well, just come on up here and let me see your, hear your side of the story. And he started giving his side, talking about she's, you know, she was a drunk back then. 
you know, and all of this stuff. And she likes to put hands on him. He said that even while she was on live with her eyes swollen, he stated that he was in the background while she was on live telling everybody not to trust him and not to do all this stuff. And he didn't really care about it because don't nobody know him. And he was just sitting back there getting the cash out. It was a man. It is a big man. Woo! That that's a lot. That's a lot. Couture Bay. See, that's why I stare at stuff like that. That reminds me of that couple that get on Facebook and act a fool. I read all 1,200 comments because I'm trying to figure out what's going on, but I don't want no parts. I love when they go live, popping their ish. I be in there hearting it. Girl! <laughs> that's me. <laughs> you can't stop it. You cannot get that. I, I know people that's... who act like that in real life, but I would never bring... Yeah. That would be a headache. I would make so much yeah. money if I brought it to, to YouTube, but the headache behind it, baby, no. <laughs> you you, you, you can't... Up with everything. You cannot get that invested because you'll do all of that and they'll be right in that. Mm -hmm. they, they love that. It's a it's a, it's a certain sector of I call it mm -hmm. the, the ghetto urban blackness. It exists mm -hmm. in our culture. Um, yeah. We don't want to admit to it. It's a sector of black women love that type, even guys. They love the toxic to energy, crazy baby mamas. They don't know how to receive a good woman that showed them dignity. They love when a woman show up to the job, bust their windows out, put gas, put put water in their tank. They love that. Yeah, that'd be crazy. But I love her though. Like that's toxic. She coming acting. That's crazy. My ex, his brother, mind you, he's married to this lady. When, when we went to the house, everybody was having a good time. All of a sudden, we heard the wife outside. The mama looked at me and said, "Uh." Oh. She started speaking in Creole to say, "Hey, she." The girl came and said, you don't know how much I love you. I love you. Do y'all know she crashed the car into the side of their house? Mm. Oh, my God. On, on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. Like, literally. Yeah. And, she, and, and they had to, like, get the baby out the back seat. Mm. It was like, girl. And she's like, mm. you don't understand how much I love you. Y'all, yeah. I was sitting over there with the sister. And I said, girl, what you going to do? She said, Sit down, eat these cookies with me because you're going to be entertained the whole time as long as you're a part of this family. And baby, when I say entertained, entertain. They don't do it anymore. I don't know if it took the second baby to make her grow up. Mind you, there's mm -hmm. a huge age gap between the first child and the second child. But I used to be like, you know you don't have to be with that lady, right? You do not have to <laughs> stay. Right. And he was like, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. They really, they really, they really love, it's crazy. They really, really, really love it. That's why I don't get involved with my sister relationship because every dude had it. Like I could see different, like a car sheet, her first car, it went up in flames. He came in front of my grandmother, put it on flames, like destroyed it and put it on fire. But she said she loved him. The end, you know, he is not. I don't get involved in everything. I talk about. It. I tell my sister. I said, "Listen, I'm gonna be using it in my comedy. I'm be using. It. I'm like, don't you talk about me on your show? I got to. I see it. It is, but I don't get involved in it because that's what you love. You love the thugs. Now, don't get me wrong. I love thugs too, just as a fantasy. But just to be in a relationship in that time, no, I love it. Look, Kiki, you smell like gun smoke. You know what I'm saying? You got a baby mama. She ain't treating you right. We get in to do some real nasty stuff, but. Yeah. You whooping me, swollen my, none of that type of stuff. Now, I do love a little rough stuff in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? You got a baby mama. She on the phone with you. Where you at? Bring back my phone. Bring back my car, Teron. I'm actually giving you some sloppy toppy. I love that type of stuff. You know what I'm That's saying? Teron. That's yeah, Teron. Yeah, Teron. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's what I love, but I don't love it. I don't the love it. When come in you destroy my place put my computer put water all on it i don't love that that's crazy yeah but that, i don't see how people can deal with that i feel like it's two reasons a person should leave out a relationship if you cheat or you put your hands on me i think those are i thought those two right there are deal breakers you know but this violent stuff i don't understand I, that's not love i don't care how much you say or how much we, it's not love. Love is not abusive. Love is not going upside your head or no, because you start doing stuff that you can't come back from when all you got to do is just pack your stuff up for the night and go on about your business. 
and you'll be able to come back and, and work it out. But they be going to this. Yeah, it's just too much. I'm not going to deal with that. Mm. But they, they just trying to do what Regina um, King, uh, what was her name? Regina King's son had the courage to do. He took his own life. Um, mm -hmm. And they want somebody else to take their life because they are cowards to do it themselves. They want somebody else to do it. So I call it deletion by relationship. That's what they want. Instead of them having the courage to do it themselves like Regina's son did. Um, let's talk about that particular interview on Good Morning America where Robin, uh, Regina came out two years later promoting a movie to talk about how her son took his own life. Mind you, let me say it again, during the time she's promoting a movie, now she has to talk about her son uh, took the coward way out by deleting himself. And she said that's what he wanted to do. He did not want to be on earth. What was your thoughts, uh, Couture Bay, when you saw that interview? Listen, as having somebody near and dear to me take their life and it leaves you feeling a little, it feels like you didn't do enough or you you could have went harder. I respected what she had to say. Um, I'm not a mother, so I don't understand how it would feel to be a mom and witness your the child you birth raised loved on to take his own life and she said she had to be at peace with his decision and i applaud her for that because the easiest thing to do is to say he's a coward he's weak we loved him the strongest thing to do is say uh this this these ideations don't have a look it doesn't have a smell it don't even have a color and i'm happy she's talking about it because so many black men take their lives i have a friend great money loving wife beautiful kids take his life like literally at at the height of so many things going on and, and he wasn't the first black man that i knew to do that he was the third only out of the three i knew to personally so um i think it's time to talk about black men and mental health and them sitting down and, and discussing their their issues and their grievances and their goals versus talking about women's weight and, and what a baddie looks like and how many bodies you got because that's not stopping the silent war that they're dealing with each other so that's how i feel about it how do you feel about it gerald well to be quite honest with you sorry i got something in my eye be quite honest with you um i didn't even really look at the interview uh for the simple fact that i'm sorry i got something in my eye Ooh, it's okay. i didn't even look at I didn't even look at the interview, uh, but I did read a little bit about it. And like you basically was saying is that, you know, it's it's really time to sit black men down and talk about depression and mental health in our community. Because a lot of times these young men be um, missing um, their, their parents and attention and they don't have nobody to talk to and they be going through stuff and don't know how to, you know, speak about it. So it's very important that we do pay more attention to our children, whether they 19, 17, 16, 15 or old enough, because there's some things that, you know, we might could do to to help them. Now, let me ask y'all this, because I didn't, I don't even recall Regina King talking about her son, because uh, like as far as him dying, I didn't know anything about the story because, like I said, I don't follow them like that. So do we know why her son decided to take life? Um. He, he was Other just, than depression? He, well, the thing was, they didn't even know he was depressed. That's crazy. She said she was mm -hmm. talking to him. They was having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the next day or two days later, right. he took himself out. So that's why right, he said right. he doesn't have a look because I'm pretty sure right. if her son was looking a certain way or mm -hmm. acting a certain type of way, she would right. have got him help because Regina doesn't seem to be from the outside looking in like one of those types to just not care about her son. I know right. her and Taraji have a close relationship to where when Taraji worked, she would watch her son. And when um, Regina had to work, she would watch her son and vice versa. And they went mm -hmm. to both their son's graduations and stuff like that because it's hard being black actresses with no strong foundation. And his dad is active. You know, his dad is a big time producer. So so the, yeah. the father took it way harder than Regina. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, yeah. I don't I don't really know too much. I'm happy she took time out to yeah. heal herself and mm -hmm. was surrounded by so much love. I think it was Angela Bassett, um Angela Bassett, Jill Marine Jones, a couple 
Viola Davis, they were surrounding her with that love, the Tarajis, to make sure she was good because yeah. they were afraid, even Jennifer Lewis. Yeah. And I applaud those women for doing that because yeah. a lot of those women have kids. Right, right, yeah. I, I, I've also, because like when I saw the interview, number one, um, she said, you know, the doctors, it was his choice because he didn't want to be on earth anymore. I guess she they talked to many psychiatrists, etc. But right. I do want to talk from this piece from someone that did at one moment in life, moment in time that want to take I wanted to take my own life uh due yeah. to so many reasons, right? Financial reasons, family, mm -hmm. abandonment. It was it was a lot. It was yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. And those thoughts come in and say, hey, you know, just just take your life. You know, it's it's not good for you anymore. Look, your family doesn't love you. Um you you kicked out of Chicago. You in Dallas. No one cares about you. You know, and I was very emotional. Mm -hmm. And but because of God's grace, um, and because of the help I decided not to do it. I decided not to do it. And the people were saying that it gets better. And I didn't, at the time I didn't see better at the time. Right. I just felt, I felt lost mm -hmm. and by feeling lost. I just wanted to, I just wanted the pain to stop. I, I had so many emotions that was rushing through. Everything was hitting me back to back to back to back to back. And so I, I wanted to, I've tried and, and I was not successful. Thank God I wasn't successful. Uh, we are still here. And did it get better? Yes, because look at us now. But to, to Regina's son, um, it is a weakness. It is, it is a spirit. Depression is real. Anxiety is real. And for anybody that is going through that, you have to fight. That's the one of the greatest fights that I had to do in my entire life was to fight to stay sane, to get my sanity back, right? Because at one point, it was gone. I uh, had to fight to get it back. And when I fought to, to, to get it back, I, I'm glad I did. When I came to Dallas, I was broken. I was weak. I, I mean, the voices just took over. I was extremely paranoid. I was not eating. I... um. And I, I remember I was in and out of the mental institution. And this one particular time that I was um, at the at the train station in Carrollton mm -hmm. believe, at the Green Line. And I said, you know, I'm going to end my I'm going to take my life. This is it. I called my job, called the schedule. I said, hey, I'm done. I'm taking I'm whatever. I can't do it. I'm about to take I broke down in tears. And um, the police came and he mm -hmm. saved my life. A beautiful white police officer. Um, put me in a squad car, took me to the emergency room, and they was able to give me some much needed treatment. Um, because at the time I wasn't before sleeping. you go too deep, Wiley. Yeah. I do want to say I, I applaud you for sharing that because so many people yeah. deal with that type of stress, those stressors. Wiley, you know, you and I met when I was in the midst of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and I want to add that you know, two years ago, we was fresh out of the pandemic, we was finally able to go outside. Y'all do not know, Wiley knows, but. Gerald, you don't know. I was stuck in Asia. So you already know what that was like. We was we couldn't go nowhere. We couldn't do nothing. We had to see the same people. I wasn't used to that. I said we was allowed to be free in Rome and y'all confining me. I said I hated it. I didn't want to take my life. But I was like, everything was just so much heightened. It was like, oh, my God, I hate my career. What is my life? this this mysterious illness i'm a single woman yes. did i do all that i needed to do you know and that starts to build up and you the gym saved my life wiley you saved my life because wiley did pray with me and i said i'm tripping i literally had to say i'm tripping and i got to and i got into my house as well that's why i say you need a positive outlet and if you're not going to go get the help at least go to the gym yeah right and see well, let me Hmm. When, when I was in that moment, you know, and I called my mother, I was in the hospital. They allowed me to give a phone call. And my mother didn't understand. She said, I don't understand what to, to just get. OK, OK. She didn't understand. And I had to get the help because I didn't have the family like Regina King, my mother. I didn't have that. That was gone. It's like my family, you know, pushed me away. They didn't know what it was. And so I had to do it. And it just I just had to fight. And I resisted it 
I resisted the change. I resisted the diagnosis. I, I resisted the system. Yeah. And one time I just said, okay, either A, I, I get the help or B, I won't make it. And so I got the help and the gym and I started working on the show. I started journaling. I start, you know, um, understanding my stresses. I started not overworking because I became a workaholic. I was just working, working, working. And I just yeah. started to be first. I just started to put me first. I get, forgave my mother. I had to forgive her because I was holding on to a lot of abandonment. And it was this book that, very important book that I'm still reading, The Invisible Egg, Black Men Identifying Their Pain and Reclaiming Their Power. Black men have to talk about things because we go through things for being just a black man. Just being yes. a man, especially if, yes. if you add on gay or if you add on trans or you add on bi or if you add on this so it's it's really really a lot now for regina king's son you know i'm praying for that particular family but i don't want the the narrative to be this is what i wanted the narrative should be yeah. if you're in need get the help and get the resources um mm -hmm. because unfortunately i didn't i didn't have a regina king bank account everything was by the taxpayers of texas the taxpayers have stepped in in the state of Texas. And so this is why I'm not so far gone against Republicans, because a Republican state was able to give me more help than Democrats. So I was able to get more assistance to this day. I'm still able to get assistance by the taxpayers of the state of Texas. So I, I, I thank God that Texas, you know, it, it, they say they saved my life. They, they yeah. I was able to get help and to understand what was going through. So, you know, this. this well, let me ask y'all. Yeah, but go ahead, Gerald, because it didn't really touch me. <laughs> yeah, let me let me ask y'all this then, because I hear people talk about depression, and I hear people who are depressed talk about uh, talking to someone. But I want to ask y'all this: Why don't people who are for example, let's use Regina King's son, right? Why do you think people who are depressed don't say nothing? Because like you said, they didn't know he was depressed, but why do y'all think, I just feel like my relationship with my mom, I feel like I can just tell her anything. Like I can share stuff with her. You get what I'm saying? Um, but why do you think people who are depressed, like Regina King's son, did not say anything to anyone about him being depressed why do you think people don't say nothing who are depressed um I, i'll go and then i'll let you go don uh i think it has everything to do with the image right if mm -hmm. he would have said that to his mother he probably would have thought um she's going to look at me different because um having that my friend uh and i'll say his name mm -hmm. trevion lancaster decided to take his life have young sons Mm -hmm. the life of the party and when she said it doesn't have a look it really doesn't have a look had he have said something would I have looked at him different no but hearing my ex cry about it to tell me then to hear his sister mm -hmm. I, I wish he would have said something so we could get the help a lot of people like to do I got this I, I'm on my own uh, I'm independent you know that I N D E P. you know all that so I think that has a lot to do with it, especially saving face. And then your mother's getting all these deals. There's a lot that goes into Hollywood and people think they want the flashing lights. They really don't because it comes with so much heightened everything. Everything is so much bigger. And then he could have felt like she, she wasn't in a place to help him. And that's, that's a hard thing to, to say out loud too. Hence why I think she said in the interview, it doesn't have a look and she's at peace with his decision. Mm. And it's sad. It's unfortunate. I, I don't think her saying go get the resources would have helped because even I believe in her mind, even if he would have had the resources, he still would have did it. You, you see what I'm saying? And that's a hard pill to swallow because knowing what my friend went through, David Broom, the one we buried in December, smiled, laughed, joked, sister pregnant. And, and lo loving, making money, nothing was going on, and still went out after his child's football game. 
and took his life. So my my heart breaks for people like that. Yes, it does. Don, we have a real estate uh, strategist that is here. I'm sorry for y'all and Couture Bay is here, you know, YouTube content creator, and you know, Gerald, he is the uh, owner of the North Carolina uh, Beat, and we're talking about Regina King um, doing a interview on Good Morning America about her son uh, passing away um, and everything. I know some terms we can't say due to YouTube, but, you know, that's what we said, passing um, and everything. But Don, what was your uh, thoughts if you uh, saw the clip of the uh, interview? Like Bay said, I mean, the, you can't put a face to it, and 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 it and it also goes aligns with the book that you were talking about about the the pain and, and black man and 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 that that thing that that because if you grew up in the eighties nineties, more than likely you got abandonment issues because all our mamas was on that stuff, right? And so. In his case, you got to think about it like this. Like, I play the devil's advocate. What if he was on some, like Regina King said, like, man, I got all this money. She got all this money. What I, what, what am I depressed for? Everybody got problems. But nobody want to hurt my problems. I'm rich. These people poor I'm talking to. Or they ain't got, a, they ain't got the luxuries I got. Everything could have been going through that man's head. And you got to remember, this man was 22, still a baby. That's not a grown-up. I mean, you don't become a... I feel like you don't become a man until you... After 28. You still got seven years of, of puberty after 21. So, with that being said, he was still... In my opinion, he was still a child. So, at the end of the day, like she said, like... It wouldn't matter what she said. I think I think when 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 if somebody already has that 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 ball spinning in their head, ain't too much more. You, me, Regina, Wiley, ain't too much more none of us can say. I don't care if like like your girl said everybody said, I don't care if he the life of the party or what. If he, that decision is already there. That decision is there. It's just a matter of time. You know what I mean? Right. And so, so that's how I see it. And then, uh, and then for me, uh, I believe what what saved me was God, because I did have a public mental breakdown. That it was done by God. So, um, that saved my life. There is not too many people that. <laughs> run towards the police officer in, in a very chaotic situation and live to tell the story, especially not in Texas. Um, so I live to tell it. And so I was able to get the help and I listened because a lot of times when you're going through, you got to humble, you, you got to be able to, some people do need the medicine because the brain, the, the chemical imbalance, et cetera, you need help. And so I needed something because I wasn't sleeping. I was extremely paranoid and I didn't really like the white folks, right? Um, so at that particular time, I was extremely like paranoid. Paranoid was just, I thought satellites, it was just my mind, it was, I was, it was gone. And someone asked a question at the, on the panel. They said, why don't people talk about depression? For for me, having a spiritual background, if you bring it up, don't worry about that, Brother Wiley. You know my answer to that, dear son. Get on the altar and call on Jesus. When I'm still calling on Jesus and I still feel sad, mm, call him longer. Go on a fast. Like, I think the church, some local churches, they're not equipped to deal with mental illnesses or, or depression, anxiety. There are some pastors that deal with depression. First lady deal with anxiety, depression. A lot of people in the church deal with it. They just suppress it and they just say, oh, it's just the devil. It could be. Mm -hmm. How can I get this enemy, so-called the devil, out of me, right? How can this be cast out? So my thing is I had to work for it. Every day it is a journey. Every day you have to talk about it. The problem is the reason why it's still so taboo in the black community, because the people that 
suffered from it and overcame it, they're not telling their testimony enough on these podcasts. They're not going viral enough. We have to promote those that went through problems in their mind and overcame it. They need to testify. That's the importance of testimony. That's the importance. Let me hear your story. We need to boost them up too, especially in the black community, because we have dealt with a lot of anxiety, depression, go all the way back from slavery. You got to go back. And a lot of that trauma was just duplicated from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation. And so somebody got to be like, who's going to get the help? So for me, it hit me in my 20s. It hit me in my 20s. I never, it shocked everybody. If you ask people about it, it's like, well, I was so shocked. I didn't know. I thought it was drugs because he never cussed. He was just as quiet. I, I, so it hit me in that, in my 20s. It just whoosh, like a train. It was like a train wreck. And so I was able to get the help. And you can get through it. You can switch. You can have your mind set on taking your life and then it can switch. And then you can get your, you know, you can change your mind. It's people that have changed their mind. Everybody didn't see it all the way through. That's why I'm happy for Jennifer Lewis because she spoke about it. And that's what made me buy her book because when she said she was out here sleeping with this man, that man, the next man, she had it in her mind. She was going in her life. So, and so and an Asian woman said, uh, Miss Mamas, and this is right before the height of the, the, you know, the apartments in Dallas and houses in Virginia epidemic happened. And she was like, girl, I'm fine. And that Asian lady was like, no, you're not fine. <laughs> so yes. I, I respect people who talk about their journey and they write about it and they talk about it's a constant battle and they tell people to go get help. That's why I say, go lay on somebody's couch and figure it out. There's a couple content creators who need to lay on the couch and figure it out. Yeah. And that's why they go through a lot. Of, that's why they go through. A, that's why a lot of, I deal with a lot of jealousy or a lot of envy because they not overcome their emotional depression. I, I can tell the ones, I'm not going to say their name because it's their story. I can tell the ones that's paranoid, got high anxiety, and they depressed. And they just say this, I'm a Gemini. No, baby, you depressed. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't because you a Gemini. What we do in the black community, we go pick out our zodiac sign. We don't want to call it, baby, you know I've been a Gemini. No, baby, you hearing voices? That's not normal. You don't want to eat? That's not normal. You walking outside and then you doing all this. That's not normal. So it ain't yeah. because you a Gemini. Uh, you you have one idea, then you switch up an idea. Do you have 55 projects you can't solve? Not one. You need help. Something is going on there. And so me and Jennifer Lewis, the reason I see eye to eye with her is because she came out about being bipolar. I, I knew something yeah. was wrong. I'm like, as I'm going through, I'm just not getting it in, but I'm getting it in on 55 men in one day. It was so many men, I didn't lost count. So I knew something was strange. I was like, wait a minute, this not normal. That's out of care and I'm not eating. I didn't want to eat. I didn't, the white folks, it was like so much. I was like, this is not normal. So when I was able to get the help, now I know the triggers to why. So now when I work, if I feel sleepy, I go to sleep. The old Wiley, skip that sleep. I'm going to drink 55 Red Bulls and work three more jobs. You can't do it. And the doctor told me this in Dallas, Texas, at Green Oaks Hospital. That's the, that's the woo -hoo, you know, that's the mental place. He said, you do good, but if you don't sleep, you're going to have another one and another one and another one. You cannot sacrifice your sleep. I was like, this Dr. Kraft, how he going to tell me what I do? He he don't know what he's talking about. So but I listened because I was having more and more problems, and sleeping is a very important thing. Most people that battle with, they don't sleep enough. They just I used to just pace the flow. Be you know pacing. I, I can tell when someone's not getting no sleep. You can. I, I can tell the ones who... Who be on edge? But Gerald, what were you about to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to play with y'all. I, I, all I was going to say was is that as parents, too, you ha also have to watch your child and pay attention to your child because people people know their kids. Like for me, you know, when I come home every day from my office, I call my mom or if I'm in my office, I talk to a chit chat, my brothers, my friends or whatever. I'd be having I call them on a daily basis when 
I ain't doing that. It's some going on with me. You know, what's going on? You ain't called today. You ain't talked today. What's going on? You know, I think people know the routine of their child. And if you don't know, then you need to try to get involved and, and, and just question them. How you doing? How's work going? How you feeling? How's this going? And maybe that'll open up what they are dealing with. You get what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't do that. So a lot of kids don't say nothing. A lot of children and a lot of grown people don't say nothing because they don't feel like they have someone they can talk to. I understand what you're saying that sometimes, you know, you're holding it in, but it's also that why am I going to talk to you if I can't talk to you? What's the point of me trying to talk to you and every time I talk to you, you cut me short or you ignore me you ain't responding back. So you leave me to deal with something that I want to speak about, you know, suffering in silence. So I feel like that. I know I think they said Regina was at the height of her career doing all of this. Yes. But let me say this. I don't care what your career is. When your child needs you, they need you. And I understand this is different because she's saying she didn't know. You get what I'm saying? That's what she's telling us. But I feel like there was a sign there somewhere that this young man was dealing with something. I'm just not going to totally believe that, you know, didn't nobody know what he was dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Or, I, 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 I just... Or they probably so, don't know what the sign is. Yes, they exactly. They don't know what the sign. I can speak for my particular. They didn't know what the signs mm -hmm. were. Um, and for me, they didn't know. They just say mm, he got the age. It's drugs. It was. It was so much stuff that wasn't. Too, they didn't know what it was. Yeah. And so again, because yeah. a lot of families is not equipped or educated in crisis. They're just not. Especially my family, they barely, some didn't even go to high school. They, they didn't even graduate from the sixth grade. Oh, so so they don't know, so they don't know nothing about psychology. You no. Know. And it's so for you to say your mom check in, I didn't have that for my mother. I have to check in with her. She's not one of them type of mothers. Hey, son, how's that? Just not her. Never was her. It probably will never be her. But I want to get Not every relationship. Her. It's not everybody, every relationship. But in this situation, I felt like that. You know, it, I, I mean, I don't know. I have to go back and, and watch the whole episode, but I just feel like that there has to be a sign somewhere. You have to notice something different about a person, you know, and how they're interacting. I just feel like it's 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 a sign somewhere. But do some people say like, it's not a sign. Do, do you feel like if there's not a sign, do, mm -hmm. does it make you more comfortable if there was a sign? That's what I want to ask. I mean, I would say yes, because it gives you an opportunity to help. And if you do all you can, then, and they still, as a result of this, then there's nothing you can do. You tried to do something, but I just, I just, I mean, I, it's just hard for me to believe that there was no sign or no, I just feel like you should know your child. Like you watch your child. I, I just, I don't know. I just feel like that as a parent, and I understand your situation is different, Wally, but as a as a parent, I feel like that you should, especially at 19, he was 19, right? You should at least keep check on your child, look at them. Huh? He was 20. No, I'm well, saying like he was 22. I'm sorry. 22. Okay, okay, he was 20. Okay. Okay, I understand. But you know, I like Don was saying, you know, you still a you know, you ain't grown yet to, you know. When you're in your 20s and on up the road, 29, 30, whatever the case may be, you still, you know, but I just feel like there has to be some sort of sign. I just feel like it has to be some, and I may be wrong, but I just feel like that you should know. That's just like if Wiley don't call me every Thursday or send me this stuff, I know something is going on because he do it every, you know, every week. Or if, you know, I'm on the phone with Wiley and Wiley is not joking or Wiley is not you know, playful like he always is, and he's not at work, then I know something is wild. What's going on? You ain't sounding yourself today. You ain't happy today. I just feel like it's a sign. And if there's, I don't know, I just feel like, like there's a sign. And if you didn't know, then maybe you're not at home enough for, with your child or with your children. That's, that's just my opinion. But because my, my you know thing what? is, that's respectful. But because we got so many topics. Oh, yeah, let me just say oh, yeah. this, Pete. 
like Monica, all about the tea. I want to shout her out, and then I'm done. She calls in and check in because she can tell what I'm going through. Um, I she called. She said something going on, and I was able to tell her. I said, Monica, I'm going through it. Going through it because you do have, and I, I'm glad that I had her to check in and she was able to help me with some things to really be that listening ear. Some people just need to get it off their chest, especially when you are a black man in this world. You need somebody that can, you can just release your day to, de to, to get it off your chest. You got to talk about it. A lot of us men, we have been trained, man, man up, be a man. Don't be weak. And like, that don't really lie. That's an outdated. Some men got to be vulnerable. It's nothing wrong with being vulnerable. It's nothing wrong to say, let me talk about my day. This really happened. So I love to really, because like today I was kind of irritated, but I'm emotional, uh, more mature now. That's like, oh, Jerry, I ain't like how I said it. Let me, let me communicate what I was going through. Because, you, you know, we as men and as women, especially in the black, we have to learn how to talk to each other without judgment. The problem is we judge people. Well, you just wake up, be a man. Like, that's why a lot of men shut down. They ain't going to tell you that they're depressed. Why? Because so you can call them weak. So you can call them a coward. You can call them a beta. Like, why would I tell you that? You calling me a beta. So I ain't going to say it. And so it is some people that know how to hide it. You just don't know. Like Robin, uh, somebody said Robin, Robin Williams, Williams. Family said that he just joked and laughed all the time. For me, thank God that you can look at my pattern that I'm so such a public figure now that if I'm not going live for a week or two or a month, check in. It's something going on. I sure did. I sure, sure will. So you have to call in because sometimes you be like, uh, it, it do get you. And it's no medication to solve that. It's just life be life in. And it's just like, oh. And sometimes them thoughts, and that's what you got to, you got to snap out of it and really stay and keep a good routine and to treat yourself. That's why I go to the movies and I see Bart Marley and I get take get out of the house because a lot of people just be in a, in a house and they just be in their thoughts and they just be in a sadness. That's what you got to snap. You got to get out and live and not just exist. You got to live. Yes. Just, yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. We're gonna get oh, yeah. into the TikTok band. We are oh, gonna yeah. get it live. We gotta check it up. We have to. <laughs> we have to get y'all y'all emotions. Now we about to wake it up. <laughs> Happy you, that, I, <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm trying to say. Tear up. Wiley, if you chop this up, I want the video. But I, you know, you know, I'm gonna give about fifty five clips. I said, oh, I said, oh, God. God. No, because you know what? When I was going through that, that's when T.S. Madison wanted to be bring yeah. her big back. At me. <laughs> I was going through it. I was like, how? Oh, <laughs> but, but speaking of evolving tiktok band don how are you feeling about the house passing the bill and the senate seems to be agreeing this is the first time in history we've seen the east coast versus the west coast get along for a free app talk about it don <laughs> oh my god not the east oh you can't hear you can't oh, hear i think he got to come back and come back in okay uh, okay. okay okay gerald starting with you <laughs> okay well i love tiktok and i feel like that it's a lot of stuff out here that y'all hosts can be working on than to be worried about tiktok you got kids out here homeless you got people know where to go people need food I just feel like it's a lot more serious stuff that's happening in the world instead of them worrying about TikTok. But I also understand the worration because when you download these apps, you accept data from your phone to be sent over. And if the United States feels like that the information uh, is giving uh, ch the, the Chinese some type of rule spy on us, then I understand that. But if they want to force TikTok, I mean, force the owner to sell TikTok to somebody in the United States and they're going to regulate it, then I'd rather just get me a VPN and, be, and stay on it. You know what I'm saying? But for the ban, I'm not for the ban. I feel like that it's putting out information. The United States don't want it out there. But you worried about uh, TikTok. Y'all need to be worried about X and what uh, Musk races ass is over there doing and having these videos and stuff of pictures of kids being killed and legs being cut off and being burnt and these people eating them. 
I feel like that freedom of speech is freedom of speech, but you got to, when it comes down to that, man, it's just too much going on. And I just feel like that TikTok don't have that. Like they have their policies and stuff set up where they're already monitoring all types of stuff that's going on. I haven't seen anything bad that they have not taken down. So I feel like they worried about the wrong app. Leave TikTok alone. But I did hear that some senators or something or a senator or someone was coming together with a group of people to try to buy it. But I just don't want them to regulate it. Leave it like it is. Don't mess with the algorithm. Don't do nothing. And Trump, Trump actually think it's a bad idea because he thinks it's going to give Mark Zuckerberg some power. So he's also not in favor of it as well. But I'm not in favor of it. You know, no. Leave TikTok alone. Yes. Don, welcome back. Where do you feel about <laughs> the tickety talk in this band? Oh, uh, you muted, Don. Um, you, you gotta unmute your mic. Yeah, unmute. Oh, is, is it? Is he unmuted? I don't know if he could come in and out and stuff like that. Okay, there, Don, you there? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So, the band is crazy. So, if anybody is supporting this band, like I'm telling you, I'm telling everybody, like no, because we can't set the presidents. That's that's what this is about. This not about whether they gonna ban TikTok or not. This is about setting a precedence because if y'all if y'all look up look up the bill and start looking at the the verbiage and some of the wording they put in that bill, that that's the scariest thing. Yeah. So it's basically saying if if you don't do what Zuckerberg did when Zuckerberg sold all our data to the CIA for for two hundred million or so, right? When the tech guys agreed that that was the one thing that they were going to keep private was our privacy. Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg went against that. That's why he's banished from the tech world. But long, but anyway, but the verbiage states that basically if our government doesn't have control of the data, then you can't operate it. And that goes for not just TikTok. That goes for all apps. I'm going to repeat that. That goes for all apps. And so basically what it's saying is if you do eliminate TikTok, because remember, Facebook is an older generation app. 40 years old and up, those are the majority of Facebook users, right? Facebook doesn't have young users, young, young. They don't have the young people. Instagram, Snap, TikTok, all these things have captured the youth. Facebook is left in the dust. It's a it's an old nigga app, if, according to the old people. I mean, to the youngsters. So what I'm saying is, they're saying if you get rid of TikTok, Facebook increases double time because now the youngsters have to go somewhere. But on but now on top of that, look how many people and look how much money that the youth are making and everybody that are making off TikTok as a business. Are you going to compensate these people? You, you so these are small businesses, side hustles. So basically, you're gonna eliminate all these side hustles because you want the data. You you basically saying in the in the legislation, either we're gonna control the data, or you can't operate. Period. So this is this is a, a another bully tactic by the by the the powers that be, um, because at the end of the day, it has nothing to do with TikTok, y'all. It has everything that to do with regulating the revenue that's 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 made through TikTok. Remember, it's not owned by us, it's owned by China. And the so, words oh, oh, no, he said he's from Senegal. Did what, what he said, Singapore? Singapore. Singapore. <laughs> yeah. So it's not even China. But, but what I'm saying is at the it, end of the China, day. But but they not they know, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's I, what this is about. And then I also and I also feel like, you know, TikTok is a powerful tool, and I want us, because I'm a political guy, um, I feel like we need to be more politically engaged and understand there is power beyond behind power. When I was reading Bishop T.D. Jake's book, The Disruptive Thinker, this is before he was swallowing up Diddy. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> he put it in and he said, I was talking to a congressman and he was saying that it's not just the people in Capitol Hill with the power, but we also got to look at Facebook. We got to look at Walmart. We got to look at BP, the power beyond the power, you know, and we don't really discuss that because the corporate entity they have they, they are power brokers in this country who have the more wealth you have you have just as much influence than the people in the white house actually you help influence the agenda of biden right so or whoever's in there right so my thing is this if you are making money on tiktok you need to be advocating and traveling around this country doing tiktok town halls and demanding that senators and your your senator right to vote no, you need to be and you can have content. And TikTok will support that because the more noise you create, only thing you have to do is to bring it down to the point where majority of them vote your interest. It's about counting the votes. It's a hundred senators in the Senate. You just need fifty one to say, "No, nah, I ain't with that." I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm with the young people. I'm with people making their bread. But if you sit at home hoping that somebody's going to come save you, you got the demand, especially if you're making the money. If you're making the money, you, that's part of your business, correct? So if anybody coming in trying to take that away, you better fight like hell. You better fight like somebody trying to take your last piece of chicken wing, you homeless, and somebody finally gave you $2 to get two wings, and then somebody tried to go. You better fight like that. Because don't don't just sit on the sidelines and let them take this away. Fight to keep it. And if you fight to keep raising up here, I can guarantee sleepy Joe Biden will come out and say, I'm going to vote against it. I've, I've been praying and thinking about it. I'm going to vote against it. Why, why? You know what I'm saying? Why do you think Kamala Harris said in front of the black folks, we need a ceasefire? Why? Because people just raise in hell about a ceasefire. So why not raise hell, keep TikTok, leave TikTok alone? You got to do it, young people. And this is our moment. This is our time to actually do it for the culture. You know what, Wiley, you said a mouthful about the TikTok and the voters. And I echo that statement. This is why I don't listen to those, your vote don't matter. See how your vote don't matter? They're about to take our livelihood away. Okay. Welcome to the nine to five. Welcome to the working entrepreneur. Welcome to now y'all not getting them endorsement deals because you're not bringing in the views. Welcome to now you got to compete with the girlies who got relationships with the bosses because they understand Preach. there's power in and read. Like power in reading. And you know the girls don't read because no child left behind has done a number on the girlies. It did way worse than the crack epidemic. Okay. But speaking of the crack epidemic, <laughs> Amber Rose is claiming that she ate peas Jocelyn Hernandez. I'm going to start with you, Gerald. Do you believe that? With your good common sense, do you believe that? And tell us why. Oh, one more time. Man. Man. Oh, you talking about Amber Rose. Did Amber you? Rose. Oh. Eight, eight piece and Jocelyn Hernandez, the Puerto Rican princess. No. <laughs> Miss, I had no. to tell a little dope. But they were supposed to release that episode and they never did, right? They, they were supposed to release the Tyler Shield. They did. So this they, is why we still BET because they they played in our face. No, they yeah they, they did. They, all, they did. Uh, the the HBCU that they had it at due to the backlash, BET agreed with the school. The school did not want that bad publicity because they was in school and they was in the classroom. And Jocelyn came up to Amber, um, no, and, and said, "You no, ain't really no uh, right." And then Jocelyn said this about Amber. You ain't really black. You black when it's convenient. You white. You just play. Right, right, yeah. right. But Amber was like, hey. And then the black teeth like, calm down, calm down. The next thing I know, Amber just, boom, boom, boom. I knew that Jocelyn lost. Because no. it, I knew, I knew, because I heard it in the word, like on Twitter. No, like, we, was, we, 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 the rumor was Amber won. But yeah. the, the word on the curve I got was she called her rich baby daddy, <laughs> her ex-husband, Wiz Khalifa. And Wiz Khalifa called them people and said, hey, out of respect to my brain, because y'all know he's the money maker next to her baby, the other baby father that's selling that peen to share. 
They was like, don't air it. Because when have we learned in the history of Jocelyn Coquelin Hernandez fighting if she don't want it to air, whether she win or lose? But she's not the boss. She don't I always never win. Seen. Okay, go ahead. She ain't the boss. She's she's a Puerto Rican employee. She just, you know what I'm saying? She ain't the boss. Stop talking about these people like they own. They ain't the owner. She 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 Molly Wops Amber. Well, she she's not, not she not the white believe that. That. She didn't give the white people and they listen to that Puerto Rican maid cleaning toilets and say we only they she ain't in power. Look at the people in the power she, on, she, on she Wiley like the Wiley like the white people. But like they this. didn't know so that the show was getting canceled. They are glorified employees. Get it through y'all thick skin. You don't control okay, those but, white folks. You just so did you see did, did you see how Jocelyn Hernandez was going off at backstage at the Floyd Mayweather's fight and she was whooping Hello. the police's ass whooping everybody's okay. ass. Five. And you want us to believe, Wally, that she ain't tear that classroom up and will Amber Hose ass? Amber Mother probably won that damn police. Call it again, Gerald. Your police, don't police, police officers hell restrict because you black folks love to be talking about black loves. Black it took five of them. Hands, hands up, don't delete me. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. It took five of them. Five big men. Right. And she said, what you want to do? Right. You want to run a lot But y'all black <laughs> folks got cameras. Y'all got cameras. Y'all want to counsel these beautiful police officers in the blue. So they just want to let this person act ignorant because they didn't want to get canceled and lose their pension and having you black folks protesting with fried chicken and wallet and eating EBT bodies on their block. So they just go ahead and let her have her pot drunken rat. Ooh. If, if this was back in the day, she would have been gone. Them officers had to hell restrain all them HD cameras and drones. They just let her act ignorant. Best believe. Oh. I'm just said the episode is out. The video is out. No, the video. Yeah, College Hill. I mean, yeah, it's they cut the fight scene out because the white people. Exactly. They cut Hello. it out because they didn't want to be backlash with HBCUs because that's the part of the brand. If you embarrass this school, they're not going to let you come back. So BET said to keep this show going, we're not going to let this fight come out because we got to so, keep coming why, to these HBCUs. Why, before you yell at me and praise the white folks. I love white know. people. I know you do, and I'm going to pass it They right got back the power, you. and they right. <laughs> they got the power. Black people got power. Black people got power. We got power too. White people don't all have the power. We got power too. Yeah, y'all got the power when you want to use it when you go to fried chicken and make the chicken sandwich. But you don't no. have the financial interest. You, when you want to make Popeye chicken sandwich pot, you go bad, but you ain't the investor. You ain't the owner. You just made a chicken sandwich go popular. But, but you don't know that though, because not all white people own shit. They don't own no, shit. They don't stop. Them do. they don't most stop. of them do. Uh -huh. They get more because they white. Let's keep it real. They are the power brokers, not only it, in America, you know but you, the you, power you, brokers you, in the world. You are right. You are absolutely right. Because you know why? Black people don't like to pay their bills on time, so they ain't got no good credit to go to the bank and get no loan. You see what I'm saying? So it ain't, it ain't about what we can't afford and what we can't own. It's just if you're trying to own something, you need to pay your bills on time, get your credit together, save your money, and go get what you want. There ain't nothing white people study. White people so you think Amber Rose won the fight, Gerald? No. Jocelyn Hernandez whooped that whole ass on some crack, on some cocaine. She was high on okay, cocaine. No, she whooped the butt. But so, then, so let's, let's do it like this. That, hold on, let me finish. On top of that, I just feel like that they need to also give them people back their money because y'all promoted that scene and everybody ran to BET Plus uh, you know, swiping their cards to get the episode and download the episode. And y'all motherfuckers ain't at an episode. No, we need that little money back so we go get us a goddamn Popeye. Scamming at an all-time high. Lock them up. Dom, what do you have to say? All right, let's 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 so we got four people on the panel. So so let's 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 do us do us a little poll or a little vote. Uh, how many of us, by show of hands, think the Amber Rose put them hands on them? I, I, both my hands is red. <laughs> there you go, Riley. Say, say, bro, Amber you know I was going to ride with that. you, bro. Amber ate piece her in that classroom. I believe up. it. She I believe drug it. her. I'm going to Just... tell you why I believe it. Because she <laughs> underestimated that light skin. She underestimated that light skin. She underestimated her. I don't think so. You you know how, I, how why I believe Jocelyn? Because Iman Shrumpert, he runs his mouth. He said the way that Jocelyn got a hold of Amber, because she snuck her. Amber snuck her. She did get some in.
But when Jocelyn yeah. got a hold of her, that 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 baby, I had to strip and sell a little poom poom while you married a a, a high price rapper with the wah, 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 with the to the point where it took all the men in the class to get Jocelyn up off of Amber because Jocelyn had let it go. She was like, you don't want to be black? You a fake ass white girl. That's what she told her. That's what mm -hmm. triggered her. Cause she was like, I, I, I mix, I mix. And she didn't like, she didn't like hearing it from an Afro Latina who's treated with privilege that you benefit from pretending to be black when it's beneficial. And it's and all of a black sudden, girl? you want to be a white girl and oh, I don't know anything about black music, <laughs> but your mama is black. Your mama is from Cape Verde. Yo, her mom is black. Her mother is black. And her dad. So my thing is, my beautiful- Blacker people, than me. My beautiful biracial people, this is the thing with black folks that the black community suffer with this. No, she suffers. I, I think because, that if you are biracial, no, you are versatile. Why, why? You should be able to uplift your white father's side, your white family, and your black. Yes. You should. You don't have to choose one. I'm you tired of black choose, people telling me to choose black. Faces. She but, don't be in the white spaces. But it doesn't she matter, but she spaces, still got a whiteness in her, though. She's still part white. Why are we telling people to be ashamed of their whiteness? If you got a white daddy, be proud of your white daddy. He gave your black mother a chance. Be proud of him. Right? He could have easily got somebody that was white. He decided to go to the brown side and to any, any stick around. They say if you're brown, stick around. If you black, get back. So he sticked around with that brown woman. So again, I feel like I don't have a problem with biracial people. They exist. The problem that I have, we want them to pick one. That's insulting if I'm black and my future Mrs. Wiley, she's white, beautiful white woman. My children got to be ashamed of their white mother just to take my side? No. no what we Show say love to both parents. Dorothy Jean and, and Kevin Spacey. You know, be in them white spaces too. The problem was exactly. was monetizing yeah. and capitalizing from her black side, which I don't have a problem with. But then she said, I don't understand the black side. If I'm not black, it don't call me black. It, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. That's what they That's all do, what? though. What? It's sending mixed signals. Because as mm -hmm. long as I've known Amber Rose, she's never been in the white spaces doing that. You know how I know she hasn't never. been in the white spaces? I'm friends with a page six girl. Where was Amber? She was in the hood club. She was on the other side. And then when she thought it was more money, on the white side, she tried to say, I don't understand anything about being black, but baby, mm -hmm. your demographic is 99.9% .9 black. You talk about being in the hood of Philly, mm -hmm. the mean streets of Philly, selling cocaine and having to get it out the mud and stripping that tin. Like, girl, make, make my, it make sense. And then all of a sudden, it's, it's, I like listening to Led Zeppelin and I don't know anything about president. And I'm a suburban girl. You confused, baby. But you can say I want to challenge that. You keep saying she's not in a white space. She's in America. This is the greatest white space ever existed. She's When she step outside and step on this American soil, this is a white space. So all of this stuff in the so-called black space, most of them black clubs that she go to is owned by a white man anyway or a white woman. Most of these so-called black clubs is not really owned by a black owner. So technically, she's still with her white people because they write. Again, I just so what you saying the white people? So what you saying? You saying the, the black people can't own nothing? Why you think that all white people? Why you think, white, they, they so why you think just the white why people own stuff? Here? <laughs> no, 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 no. The black people do at one particular time. Black people own something, but they wanted to be with the white folks because they was right. They sat at the lunch counter. We shall overcome. Please serve us. <laughs> so the white people gave in, allowed you all to serve. And what did the black people do when they came into the white space? They start bringing their EBT, their comics. They start criticizing these white seasoning, said ain't seasoned enough. With that, you know country, Wiley. You the one that did a city in. You the one that put on there that we want to be sitting with white people. But now you're able to eat from the white table and you said it's not enough seasoning salt. But baby, last time I checked because of the data, the seasoning salt is causing hypertension, diabetes. Is that a high milk, and just so much with the statistics. It's all on my beautiful white paper. So again, Black folks have to understand y'all fault, y'all sacrifice to ride in the front of the bus. Y'all fault, fault 
to get to um to be and sit in white hotels and what happened you we abandoned your down. black <laughs> community and you join <laughs> in with the white folks so let's stop playing these games when y'all was I'm able to sit in front of the bus you stopped going to pookie and ray ray bus company you, I, I don't want to drive your bus i want to drive with the white folks i want to sit with the white folks i want to just sit in front of the bus not on it i just want to sit in the front with the white folks you're not owning it what happened to the black hotels it shut down what happened to the black transportation services that we had it shut down what happened to all the black motels it's gone because you wanted to sit and lay down with the white folks why are you getting mad that i'm calling that is right what did dr king fought no. for he fight for what, the people who built this country Wally? it is what it is <laughs> but Wally, it don't matter how Wally, it don't matter how much you love the white people, they still look at you as a nigga. I understand so that, matter. and I love the fact because I understand that some of you black folks feel the same way about me anyway. But a white man who saved me, a white a white police officer, beautiful police officer, he did not destroy me. He just gave me a little electricity, a little taste, because I was trying to run in the street. <laughs> that white beautiful police officer, he saved my life. But you ebt bonnie wearing at the library just wait what did y'all do y'all pulled out your cell phone y'all laughed the kiki but that beautiful white police officer he saved my life again i love white people and you know that's why you agree with amber rose it's that i love what she's a beautiful white woman and she got some black side in her. I love it. I really, really love it. But why are we feeling the shame to uplift white people? They helped bring me to this country without them. I'll be in the Congo fighting a civil war with Tasha K, baby. Oh, my. See, I knew you was going to do it. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm just saying. They brought me to America, the greatest country. I will still be in the Congo. I will still be in Mali. I will still be with the Nigerian scammers. I'm in America because those beautiful white folks, and let's be clear, a lot of the black people in Africa, they sold us to white people. They didn't have, I say, sold us to them for a good old coin. And we had to come over to America. Some of y'all was in Jamaica. Some of y'all was in Trinidad. Some of y'all, wherever, wherever, wherever the boat dropped you off, your people was there. So again, I love white people. I would not feel ashamed of white people. I love white people. They are the greatest people on earth. They built wealth for centuries and they didn't back down for you black Bonnet when EBT eating an Obama phone. Over the dodge. Okay. Over the dodge. So you believe Amber Rose won the fight? I believe she won the fight because white people have been winning for centuries. Yes, she won the fight. <laughs> I said dodge. They still win it. Oh, you talk about that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I just say she won the fight because I know everybody was going to say Jocelyn won. I think I. it, it don't matter who won. I mean, I think it's foolish, honestly, to be fighting and stuff like that. But I, hey, yeah. I think Amber put them hands on her. I, I can see Amber putting them hands on her because I feel like Jocelyn, you know, Jocelyn, a, a, a live wire, man. Like anything, it just pop her off. You know what I mean? So when you have people That's like that, they, 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 sometimes that emotion puts you in a bad situation. Like mm -hmm. you can't fight certain people mad with emotions because they know how to vibe and weave and they're going to take advantage of you being mad and beat you up real bad. So. Well, I can see it happening too. Because I, I because I was scammed and I need to do a class action lawsuit against the BET company, you know, the good white folk, Wiley. Uh <laughs> I will say this from the, the start of it, Amber was the one in her feelings. But speaking of in her feelings, uh Wiley's favorite rapper, JT, everybody wanna JT is going on her solo tour. Uh uh, Gerald, that's your eyes. What do you have to say about the tour? Boo. All I right. don't like JT. I used to like JT when she when she was when she was on that bunk in federal prison and she was, you know, she was up there writing hits then. I don't really like JT now because JT is like a girl I've seen in the streets. It's like she's low-key an evil, mean girl. Like if everybody don't like her. She's the type of person that just, I don't know. She just portrays a bad attitude to me. I don't know her with her relationship with her and Parisha. I don't know. I, I just don't like JT. Um, I think that 
Uh, these club venues are good for her because nobody is going to go anywhere anywhere else, you know, to see her. And she's not big enough. I don't know what this thing is going on with her going on a solo tour and trying to go on, you know, solo. But Carisha held it down while you was out there in prison doing fraud. Okay, <laughs> doing fraud out here in these streets. And young Miami was out here in these streets making it seem like that the other city girl was out there with her, but you was in jail, JT. <laughs> so I, I just, was streaming free, JT. <laughs> okay, so but I mean, I like, I like, I mean, she, I, JT, all right, she all right, she all right. She's not somebody I'll buy a ticket and go see. You know what I'm saying? But, but go she's okay. Hmm? You're not gonna see her on tour? No, 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 no. Don, you thoughts? I mean, the small venue speaks for itself. The small <laughs> venue speaks for itself. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. No, nah, I'm going to just tell you why. Because for real, like, City Girls blew up real, real quick. So they got to take advantage of an algorithm quick because they had a lot of support. You know, everybody was rocking with City Girls. You had, you know, every from every race rocking with City Girls. But that just shows you the power of the algorithm and show you the power of having whatever that machine is behind you, take that machine away. Now what you got, you get what I'm saying? You take that machine that, cause think about it like this, uh, uh, later on throughout the, you know, I start giving y'all some, 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 some sauce, but I can, I can, I could give everybody, um, some apps they could download and use for their YouTube or whatever to where they can make about 50, 60,000 posts a day. So, and I'm talking about, just imagine the this machine that, that can make Beyonce number one and stream a billion times in one day. Imagine them taking that shit away from you. And you really have to get it out the mud with your talent now. Not with the machine pushing that narrative on the radio. You get what I'm saying? Influencing our kids. No, 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 no. You got to start from the bottom like everybody else and do it. So, if you're gonna start from the bottom, you gotta start at a small venue. But you know why I mean? send it to you, Wiley? Because I know you, I know you want to pop your ish. I do want to say this. JT, if you're going solo because you desire to go solo, then I support it. If you're going solo because you feel like um Carisha Young Miami being mentioned in a Diddy lawsuit where she's not yes. being sued, where she's not actively in trouble, then shame on you. I speak to your shame. In Wiley's channel, because when you decided to scheme and scam and swipe them visas that were not your visas for the poor, good white folk, okay, stealing from the white folk, right, and running it up, what, what, what? Young Miami was out here, put city girls on her back, and said, Everybody yep. scream free JT, and they were screaming it. And y'all can talk about Young Miami. She's not the strongest rapper, but she's the brains of the operation. Do y'all not understand? Every time she said something, she said, flewed out, flewed out. She had Rihanna, billionaire bae, saying, I want to get flewed out. Baby, you know you make it when you get the pop princess, Miss Avon Lady, Miss Victoria's Secret, out here talking about some flewed out, and she ain't did music in 10 years. Baby, you know you made it. So I feel like JT, you fake. Over to you, Wiley. I, I think I think honestly, I think JT is very smart because Carisha is a tainted woman. She is attached to a super um pedo, um toucher of men, um, uh, freak offs. And JT said, Listen, I, I have to do my own thing, and I support it. To see a beautiful chocolate woman deciding to um, do it on her own, I feel like she can do it. She's attached to Nicki Minaj, and we will see how much of a queen Nicki really is um, to see if the barbs are going to support her in those small venues. So it's not a hard thing to sell out 50 tickets. It's not hard. Uh, she, it should be much, much easier for her. And so for Carisha, um, she can't really do the podcast no more because Diddy is pretty much a, a spoil you good as of right now. So JT can't wait. JT been waiting in prison. So now she's out. She want to do her music. She want to do it on her own terms. And I love the fact that she's deciding to do this small venue. I'm going, I'm not going to go to one unless I get a wheelchair to sit down because most of those small venues, you got to stand up and it's going to be musty and everybody going to be breathing. And say, I need to sit down. But I also would say to JT, uh, you need a beautiful white manager. 
um, a beautiful white team, white publicists, uh, a beautiful white rapper. Uh, what is the white rapper? I love him so much. Ooh, that's Zaddy with a Z. That beautiful white rapper, he just got a song. Uh, I just okay, the baby. And it, I forgot, I listen to him in the gym a lot. Jack, uh, uh, Jack, Jack Harlow. Jack, Jack Harlow. He needs you need Jack Harlow. You need great white people around you. <laughs> See, in 60 seconds, having this great, beautiful white people because they write, immediately you EBT people will follow her. Let a white person bring her up introduce her show her love have her show her, embrace her let jack uh was it jack harlow show her love you ebt uh uh bonnet wearing <laughs> section a voucher holder y'all will be uh -oh. rushing to show her love <laughs> because the white folks because they write you will be brown sticking around in that line all you black folks that's in the back will be rushing to get a ticket on Afterpay or the other apps that's out there because you got to break it up in payments, right? That's what black folks like to do. Oh so God. I support JT. The only thing she need, she need a beautiful white savior to get her career on a rocket ship because every successful black artist in this in industry for the last 30 years had a beautiful, strong, white Saver Whitney Houston, she went from the white man to white powder, and that white man still keeping her name relevant. Even Beyonce had white people behind her helping her. She got a white team. You don't, she don't just have black folks, she just let y'all dance on stage like in a circus. But if you look at a team behind the scenes, most of them is white. Because white people know this world. They know what you EBT people think. They know how you uh, move. That's why they became billionaires. It is what it is. They know, know, it they know <laughs> how to do it because they got psychologists to sit there to study your mindset, to study your algorithm, to study how you move, to study how you do your hair. Why do you have edges? Why do you have weeds? Because of white folks. Why do you have hair? heavy heavy thick eyelashes because of white people why are you going to putting your bodies at risk because of black surgery because white people said your body ain't thick enough you didn't do it because of the black people you did it because of the white strong a PR campaign got you doing that. You weren't thinking about your booty. You thought your booty was thick and big at the frick knee. Now you need a bigger booty. Why? Because the white person said we wasn't did. even around for the freak nick. That we was way too young for that whitey. Well, well, yeah. well, well, well. Some of you EBT people that is watching was at the freak nick, and y'all had big booties, but because of the white power commercial and these ads. Do you feel like your booty is small? Come to Columbia and get a big, thick booty. And they do it because of white people. And you did it. It is what it is. I know you're I on feel, it. I feel you're like this. Out. I feel like this. Everybody likes to bring up Diddy, but let's not act like Lil Uzi don't have a background. But speaking of backgrounds, our final topic, hashtag Kate Gate. Kate Middleton, the England's princess, is missing. They said, where is the good white woman as white who likes to go off? Nobody has seen her. They have botched Mother's Day in UK. Baby, she is missing. They said it's a Kate Spiracy, Kate Gay. They said her husband out there cheating with some other hoochie mama, like father, like son. Baby, what are your thoughts speaking with you, Don? <laughs> Say, man, everything going down in, in, in the royal family. So, you know, hey, man, she running away. She giving me Prince Diana, Princess Diana vibes. You get what I'm saying? Straight up. Like, at the end of the day, she, she in the short period of time she been with that family, whatever you want to call it, um, she know too much. You know she can't leave. No matter what she going through, they can say anything. They can say the, the one of what the 45 year old dude, the one that just got suddenly died. Do y'all know how he died? The Baron, yes. He 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 got somebody popped him in the head with a hammer or something. A blunt force trauma to the head. You know what I'm saying? So then Prince Charles, they say he got six months to live. You know what I mean? 
the Rothschild just died, which is a part of their family. That's the, that whole bloodline. But at the end of the day, um, with her, it's going to be controversy just like Princess Diana, I believe. Mm. It's because remember, Charles, Charles cheated on Princess Diana. Then Princess Diana said, Oh, you think you're going to do that shit to me? Shit, too, can play this game. And she started fucking with an Arab prince. And now end they both And end they up both getting pregnant. Thanks to the pale, the pale good people. Wiley keeps talking about. Yes. So she went to she went to the Arab guy. She ended up getting pregnant, and all of a sudden they both died in the car wreck. All I'm saying is, for whatever reason, the women are running away from the men on that side of that that castle, man. Every man on that side of the castle done cheated on that woman. I'm being real with you. Look at look at the history. All of them got mistresses. <laughs> Gerald, what are your thoughts? I mean, I don't know. Listen, I don't. I'm just, I, I'm just gonna go with what Don said. Everything that Don said, I really, really, because I, I don't like them white people, Jewish people, whatever they are. These type of uh, people over here, that, the royal family, I don't really fuck with them. I really like them. I really follow them like that because I just think they ain't all of that, you know. But um, I mean. Maybe she, you know, I think she, I thought she had to have surgery. She had to have some type of surgery, right? They said they haven't seen her since she had a surgery. They said she had surgery. The rumor uh -huh. was she had abdomen surgery, but that takes six right. weeks. See, the, the, the TikTok FBI and CIA agents was on a job. Not only did they analyze, maybe we need to use these resources for us, mm -hmm. because the way they was able yeah. to break that Mother's Day photo down, it said artificial intelligence. They ain't seen the kids. Right. They ain't seen the wife. Uh, they're mm -hmm. saying she was not between the washer and dryer because she's trying to leave. And I'm like this, Kate, you can't leave no powerful family that owns 90% of the world. You think you're just going to mm -hmm. walk away free? Baby, they'll put you in a pine Ooh. box and say, mourn with us before they let you go. You I saw the Duchess Fergie. The Duchess Fergie left her kids at the palace. Mm -hmm. They said, Take them kids if you want to. They'll be stripped of everything. You know what she said? I'll come back. They just now welcome her back in the mid-2000s. She said, I love everything about Buckingham Palace. I love the queen. All hail the queen. They said, your kids will have everything they were born into, and you can get your title back, baby. Yeah. That is power. Yeah. And, 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 they, and they racist. They racist. And another thing. They, another thing, I just feel like that, you know, they saying that the photo is altered and edited it, and, you know, that that is, you know, draw some speculations and concerns, but I don't really like them. I don't really cover them, talk about them. They're not important to me. They're at the bottom. So if she's missing, good luck finding her or whatever happened to her. You know, they no racist people can deal with that themselves. <laughs> Done. The greatest, I, I love the royal family. I feel like they're beautiful. Aww. A beautiful, powerful family, and when the queen passed away, I, I mourned for three days and three nights. I also want to say to Kate, I, I feel that she should be happy that that beautiful royal bloodline welcomes her at the table. She should be excited that she has wealth that her name will outlive her. She will be written in multiple beautiful white history books. And why are you so upset? You're not EBT. You don't have a bonnet. You don't. You're not on food stamps. You know what I'm saying? You're not. You you are wealthy. And what so, about love, Wiley? Remember, uh, you preached about love. Love. Well, if you have money, who cares about the love? <laughs> okay, it's about the money and the power. It's plenty EBT card wearing people in love, but they're in debt, but they're in poverty. It's not about the love. It's about the money, and you all would know this. That pure wealth, she will, her name will live on forever. And I want to say this about King, and I want to say it about her husband. They have every right to cheat because they're a powerful man. I don't want my king to just be with one woman. I want my king to give that royal seed to anybody except the EBT card wearing, bonnet wearing, except that. They don't need that. They love Pookie. Keep them with Pookie and Ray Ray. Keep them with Pookie and Ray Ray. But they should be able to express themselves. They are king. They are bosses. They are leaders. Men should be able, if you are a king and you in power, I personally believe, this is my personal belief, I believe that you should be able to give that royal ride to any beautiful person that you want to give it to.
I don't think you need to be faithful to one. A king is not designed to be faithful to one. If you look at all the kings in Solomon, right, Don, did he have concubines? Did this one and that in Africa? You black folks love to talk about Africa. Do the Zulu kings and, and Zulu warriors, don't they have 55 wives? So why can't this beautiful white family, powerful family, they, you know, why are they not able to have they, they cake and eat it too. I love them. I, I I wanted to go to the royal wedding. I wanted to go to the funeral to see my, oof, I get emotional about the queen when she passed. Woo. I wanted to be there. I want to sit and mourn with the family because they, they're not like black folks. They didn't have to fight who's go, where's the gold for me to bury the queen. They didn't have to fight who gonna get the lawn chair, who gonna get the lawnmower, who gonna get the couch. Everything was at peace. So I, I'm really, really upset at Kate that you ungrateful. Your hair is together. Look at your hair. Your lipstick, your skin. You don't have no blotches. You don't have on a bonnet. You got your edges. You should be excited being able to be welcome at the royal family. And to King Charles, long live the king. If she get out of order, divorce her, put her away, and get somebody, a younger white woman that will be subservient to the crown. I yield back. <laughs> <laughs> I yield like, back. Like the racist white people, they ain't like that girl. What's the, what's the girl, the black girl from America? Uh, uh, I think she biracial too. What's the name that the uh, oh, Megan Markle? Talking about Megan Markle. Yeah, yes, they did not like Megan Markle at all. You but thought they was really going to let you come in and sit down with I them? Like her either, Miss. Oh, he, he had to. He had to. He had to talk to Megan problem. Markle. They had to strengthen that bloodline. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> their bloodline was that dying now, so they had to put some color, some melanin in that that bloodline Ooh. to keep it going. Two percent of melanin. <laughs> Melanated, all right. Because one thing about us black people, we have strong seed. Our DNA is 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 strong, and in in and, and if you get involved with with the beautiful white people, that's an unstoppable generation. Most white or most biracial people are powerful, because if you got a white father, especially a white beautiful father, and you got a, a EBT project woman and y'all intertwine that's a powerful thing because they got the hood they know how to carjack and they know how to maneuver in the corporate world so that's power that's what's power. wrong with EBT <laughs> that's power I love it though because sometimes you got to know how to work in the streets but also you got to have that beautiful white you keep saying life. EBT man you know who's selling stamps yeah that's what I'm saying we're talking about some stamps most of the stop. people that I see selling stamps is Pookie and Ray Ray <laughs> with bonnets I never see a beautiful white family selling EBT Pookie they be in the line more than we do they be in the line doing the stamps more than black folks I never see a, I will not let you Jared, respectfully disrespect my beautiful white people. I never see them at Kroger's selling Bro. food stamps. I only see you. Right now. I'm gonna tell you how Wally line right now. I bet all of us right now we can pack up everything and go to Utah. And I bet one of the Mormon bitches with about 13, 14 kids selling stamps at Wildwood. I don't I well, getting like six thousand a month. What are you talking right about? Right now. Utah. All I know is Chirac the violence and those EBT <laughs> Obama wearing shirts, Oprah Winfrey wearing hats, were selling you food stamps. I never seen these beautiful white families selling food stamps. I never seen it. Maybe if I go to Utah, I believe that fake news. I don't believe white people in Utah would do that. I would have to physically see it for myself and I would ask those beautiful white family, why are you doing it? That make them very smart because again, it's probably a reason. I don't have to talk to those white people. I understand to get an understanding. I don't want to judge them. But the EBT body wearing, they wear bonnets too. They wear bonnets too. They don't again. They wear bonnets to protect that, that, that good hair, that good weave, and that good that good hair. 
I don't you see this there. On Most of these EBT body wind got bald spots, crunchy, no edges. They got lint uh -huh. on the head, and it's musty because most of them don't even wash it correctly. Again, they be in the airport with them crying babies. No father in sight. No father in sight. No father in sight. Some and so I just don't understand that. So to Kate, I love you, but I can fall out of love with you if you disrespect my king. If you disrespect my king, it's F you. Get her out of the, throw her out of the kingdom. Throw her out of Gag City. Throw her out of the palace and Gag replace City. her. Throw her out of Gag City. Gag City is Nicki Minaj's tour. Gag City, Nicki, that EBT <laughs> went heifer, got that from white folks. She didn't create that. She not that smart. Look at her husband. Case closed. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. Not that smart. White people told her to say "gag city." Most of the people in Nicki Minaj camp, between her maid and her husband, mistress, and her staff, most of them is white. Only you EBT wearing folks do the makeup and the hair. That's what y'all good for. But the people, the power brokers, they white. Her attorney that was doing all the suing of nosy hoe of all these YouTubers, he was white, beautiful white brother, and he smelled white. Just smelled so good. Smell white. He smelled white. Uh, he smelled white. Uh, what body spray you know and what cigarettes? We talk about today, Bishop Bling Bling getting forty five years. He deserves. Oh, he looking at forty five. He got him yet. He looking. Yeah, he looking at forty five. Oh gosh, he need to go. He need all of them. Give him all, all of them. And then this is the thing. He keep on talking about. This is this all has to do with Merrick uh, Eric Adams down in New York, sir. Listen, you stole this woman's ninety thousand dollars, okay? That was in her savings account line. What does what does uh, Eric Adams have to do with you stealing this woman's ninety thousand dollars? What does that got to do with you falsifying bank statements, trying to get loans, and you only had two dollars and fifty cents in your bank account? I'm just trying to understand. So uh, I think Lamar Whitehead needs to go to jail. God is not playing with him. This man has played with God too long. He was playing with God when he was standing up in that pool pit and the men ran down in, a, uh, in the church on him. And he got on that God dog on flow like he tripped and fell. But when that woman came up in there, he grabbed and choked her. He needs to go to jail. He needs to go to jail because he's a fraud. He's a scammer. And his two member church need to start raising money so they can put it on his books. He need to go oh. to jail. Oh my God, John! You need to go how to jail. Feel about the good bishop getting <laughs> found guilty. I mean, is anybody surprised? Mm -mm. I thought he was living a life of Christ. Come on, man! Come <laughs> on, from Eddie Long to all these other ones, man! Come on, man! Listen, my bishop, my pastor over at King Solomon Baptist Church down in New Orleans, Louisiana. He ain't never had on no Fendi Gucci, Louis Prada, YSL. He ain't rocking no Cubans links. He not doing that. He just he, he probably more of a community activist than he is a preacher. That's some that, but that that's totally different than what you're seeing with the jokers we talking about. These jokers ain't in our community like that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So these are mega church guys. So at the end of that, or pretend to be mega church guys, but it's all about the money. It's all about the money. That's why there's more churches in our neighborhood than actual black-owned businesses because it's about the money. And it's about the money that we can give the church, not about the money that we can generate on our own. So at the end of the day, it's still about the money to me. So, yeah, he, he all of them going to be guilty. We're going to find all of them guilty. This is going to be – this is the generation where that – that 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 veil over the over the church <laughs> and all the little super sigs of every religion is gonna start crumbling down, man. We're gonna start seeing it for what it is. Yes, Ebony. Thank you, Ebony. Thank you for talking about my choker because it's a chain that your your boyfriend and your husband eyes can afford, but not his, you know, his wallet. But thank you, baby, because it looks good and it costs more than your whole house. Have a good day. Oh, all right. Terrible. You're not supposed to read the chat. That's a nice little chat. <laughs> I also, right, I also love this beautiful white prosecutor <laughs> and the beautiful white judge <laughs> that justice was served. And I don't understand you black folks that think that you can just scam this beautiful white country. 
you're not going to be successful. They're going to confine you. And so I'm not shocked. Most of you so-called black preachers are uneducated. You think you can go toe-to-toe with the beautiful white power structure and you would lose at every turn. Everybody that tried lost, except Haiti. But I guess Haiti's still losing because they got a gang leader as a prime minister. It's filthy in Haiti right now. So I want to say to Bishop or to Whitehead, because you scam your, your church member, you got to pay the pi- price and serve your time, brother. I'm with you when you're right. I'm not with you when you're wrong. When you went against my beautiful white family in the Justice Department, I knew you effed up. Those beautiful white prosecutors put their life on the beautiful FBI. I love the FBI, the greatest organization ever to exist since sliced (laughs) bread. When you lied to that federal agent, that was the end of your career as a Gucci, fake Prada-wearing entity. And so I want to say from the heart, to the beautiful white prosecutor, thank you. To the beautiful white judge, thank you. To those beautiful to white, beautiful, white, beautiful white jurors, thank you as well. And for those EBT jurors, thank you too. Thank you. Like Ebony over there, wearing, over there sitting in the parking lot of McDonald's trying to get us. <laughs> she she tried to get Wi Fi to watch us tonight. <laughs> But I, 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 but I look like he narrow like read the comments. I, I feel like that's great that you read the comments. I, I feel mm-hmm. like it needs to be read because like these people do be trying. And most of them, I get most of them. It's an echo. It's an echo. Oh, it's an echo. Hold on. It's, it's, oh wait, let me see if I can hear you. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, like he calling somebody. Say, come on up here. Tell her to come on up here so I can get. Oh, okay. Okay. I think it's muted on your end, Gerald. I think it's muted on your yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, echo. Hey, come on. Up. Echo. But I can guarantee you, when Ebony, oh, let me mute you, Gerald, because I think it's echoed on your end. Let me see. Oh, and when Ebony hit the link, I can guarantee she have a bonnet. I can guarantee she have children with multiple baby daddies. Oh, my God. I can guarantee you she's on the way for a Section 8 voucher. I can guarantee you that she probably already had the voucher ready. And she probably got a husband, multiple people in the house, probably, probably. Got a son that's out there carjacking this beautiful family family. and calls a crime in the neighborhood. I can guarantee you that. But again, Ebony, you have every right because Dr. King fought for this and beautiful white people allow us to have freedom of speech in this country. They created the the Declaration of Independence in the Constitution. So you have every right to express how you feel. And I have every right as a beautiful, white-thinking, black man um, to welcome you. But I don't ex- respect you because I want to know, first of all, do you love white people? If you love white people, I welcome you. If you don't, it's F you. And I hope they come and repo your body. I yield back to you. I yield back to you. Get this, ho- get this, get, get, bring that hoe on up here. <laughs> Mute your mic. Mute your mic. Look, look. The panel is late today. Um, I'm going to ask Wiley, are you taking callers? <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, we could drop. Yeah, we could drop the link. I'm sorry. We could drop because They won't be able to hear. Yeah, because like Ebony, but anybody that know that they troll and we troll back. I understand. I get it because this is what we do in the culture. We troll people. They troll me back. They tell me to take my meds. He must have taken. They pretended to be Lotto. I get it. I understand it. I get it. They talk about me with my shirt, my EBT wearing shirt. They say it, so I should have every right to say it too. And one thing about this white missionary when I was in Africa, she really told me not to allow people to get under your skin. This beautiful white missionary, her name was Sister Sister Sarah. Sister Sister Sarah? Sarah. Missionary Sarah, as we call her. (laughs) She, She really loved me. And she used to say, she said, brother, don't let them get under your skin. You with white folks, we right. We will protect you. And she had been protecting me ever since. Now she gone over to glory and her spirit. And she used to give me some beautiful peppermints, white peppermints. It's like the best. And she would hug me. She would embrace me. She would pray with me. And 
right then and there. That's why I have this thick skin. I want to thank Missionary Sarah when I was in a, when I was in Africa. She helped g- give me some great advice. What I love part it. of Africa you was in? What country? <sighs> well, it was multiple parts. I saw a lot of dirt roads. Oh, um, here you go. <laughs> it wasn't really that developed. It was back in 1995. It wasn't that developed. All this new AI Africa that they're showing on television is uh uh boys developed. Okay, we got uh Amy, Amy, you live. Hey, so I guess my question is, are you are you serious? Do you I mean, because I know troll is in your name. So are you just trolling us tonight about, you know, loving the good white people or are are you serious on a scale one through ten? On a scale one through ten, white is right. No, I'm being I'm being serious. I, I'm being look at the statistics, ma'am. We have most of the presidents that gave us our freedom were white. Um, I live in a beautiful white state. Our governor is white. I was able to get some good white assistance for my mental health. Uh, under Obama, only thing I got from well, Obama okay, was a cell phone. Well, I, would I like didn't to, get help. Yeah, so um, because majority of your watchers, Amy, you're from Baltimore. Uh, no, I uh, I went to school out there, but uh, I went to school. I graduated from Howard's doctoral program. But anyway, um, because most of your uh, watchers are black it will behoove you to kind of take another narrative and yes you say the good white people saved you because you was going through a uh, mental illness but then you have to dig deeper and say hey why were you going through mental illness why why was your mother you know this way and so it's not like your mom was born you know, an alcoholic. It was something in society that caused her to have those kind of traumas. And I don't want to go too deep, but everything really um, boils down to white supremacy and white privilege and stuff like oh, that. I, I I challenge that. I believe if my mother had a beautiful white husband, um, she wouldn't but, have to drink. Dating Pookie and Ray Ray thugs, ruthless thugs, game banker, carjacker. But then you have to peel back the he, layers he, on why your mother was in that environment. Because Maybe. she did not listen to me. If you date white, you will be all right. She didn't do it. She decided to date black people in thugs, hood people, and it destroyed her. It's kind of the same, the same thing with Tyler Perry films where he kind of always portray, you know, black people as struggling or going through some kind of trauma. And yeah, that may be the reality that may be black people's experience, but you have to peel back the layers. We were not born this way. What in society made us this way? And really it's discrimination, it's prejudice, it's racism, it's all of that. So you can't just, you know, (laughs) uh, you have to peel back the layers and analyze it uh, more critically. And I understand you have a really playful spirit but because most of your watchers are black um you know we can only take that probably for like five minutes not like i don't care what you can take because it's my opinion because the forefathers of this country (coughs) white beautiful white people they said freedom of speech so if you can't handle my freedom go over there with the ebt the thong wearing, rolling around the floor on juice. Go do it with those black people. But you have to do your research. Why I preach, you- brother? Preach. I've done, I've done my correct? research, ma'am. I just don't agree with your outdated strategy. It was it was racism. No, ma'am. I, I, I don't no, that's the truth. But but anyway, uh, uh white not people true. are uh, not uh, true. Uh, it's your are- truth. They it's are the largest it's not recipients of it's uh, welfare. Truth. It's not the truth. Ma'am, you're coming here criticizing my beautiful white supporters. No, no, no. I'm saying do allies. your research. White I have done my research. White people gave assistance. us our freedom. During the right, Civil uh, Rights Act, President Johnson, a beautiful white man, gave us the Civil Rights Act. He gave us the Fair okay, Housing uh, Act. A white Bay, person done it. Not Obama. I just want to give Couture. Bay. He gave us a cell phone. Thank you for that, Wiley. Couture Bay, uh, and your, it was a flip phone. It wasn't your, even an iPhone. It was a flip your, phone. Your moderating skills and your transitions are flawless. Shout out to you. Thank I you. do appreciate the baddest bloggers uh, commentary as well. Thank so you, you, as well. Have something great. you have something great. I just, I just want I him just, to dial back uh, his okay. allegiance to white people. Uh, yes, yeah, something a little bit. Those ain't done nothing. I would not never dial back because you're a woman. You're not in a woman's place. I would not dial back and call and not defend white people. 
I got to defend white people. You are a woman and you have to know your place. You cannot tell me as a man that I cannot defend white people. How dare you? How, why would I tell you as a woman? You shouldn't be wearing all them lashes. You know you ain't got no lashes. You shouldn't be wearing no 55 inches on your head. You know you got no edges. You know you your hair is about two inches. But you gonna do that? Why? Because somebody white told you to do it. So you have every right to do it, ma'am. And but to Don, uh, thank you for your commentary as well. I would just, and I don't mean any. Gonna try to I don't mean me any because harm I'm or, somebody that's white, and she got white paper in her pocket. Well, if you don't like white people, give me all your cash. It's nothing but white presidents on there. Obama's not on there, or Harriet Tubman. I don't mean anything. If uh, you don't Biden, like white Don, people, go to Africa. But I would you can't just go maybe there say, say it's controlled by white people. Just like maybe wipe off the uh, camera lens because, you know, it's just not. It could just be a little bit more clear she as far like, as the pixels and everything. She even showed <laughs> on camera because I know she got a bonnet on. I know it is. I know Man, it is. You, I know you it would get if you, I was to show you, but because I have I'm a professional get, job. Now, you are a professional job, and I can guarantee you <laughs> your I'm boss, I can my guarantee you your boss is white. You ain't got no black boss. Uh, well, I do. I'm a professor at a university, and so uh, I don't know anybody black that owns a, uh, that owns a university. That university. But anyway, I'm gonna drop down because I see yeah, you, you gotta one. drop down because your boss is white. How dare you come on this platform <laughs> talking that you should be defending white people and you working for the white man to go quit your job, go get your body and sell so a tin can, go sell a black owned pot. Go sell a black owned bread. Go sell a black owned hot dog. Because again, how you gonna tell me not to defend white people because they right and you working for white people? Make that make sense. You're not even living by your own principle. By wig, by body wear. How dare oh you try God. to come for me and you working for white people? You ain't working for nobody black. Oh my God, white <laughs> What you work at still? Uh, uh, what's her name? A uh, Spelman College that's named after a white woman. Now, ain't no Ooh. black woman. Uh oh, come on now, Wiley. Not everybody know that you probably got your NAACP card. You probably an NAACP member. Last time I checked, some beautiful white folks founded the NAACP. Talk about it, Jewish at that, oh. right? So, and the I, United Negro College Fund. So, why we they not ready for that history? But white, but white people helped us. We would still be on the plantation if it wasn't for beautiful white people that helped us get under the uh un underground railroad. I like Amy. Amy, I, Amy stood up. Now, if Amy would have came on camera, I would have gave her her team. Yes, she could come on camera because she got a bonnet on. She can't. I see. My thing is with black people, y'all always say keep it real, correct? But you only want me to keep it real when it's your opinion of real. But if I challenge your idealism, it's a problem. I'm no longer real. I'm fake. But you can't have the two. You just just be keep, just keep it real, Couture Bandai. I want you to be real, but believe how I believe. Just say that. Go ahead. We got Dream in the back. Uh, we're gonna bring Dream up. So Dream, hey, Dream. Uh, what she want to say. Who uh we gonna put our fire up so for people to know. Hey Dream, you live on the air. Hello, hello, Wiley. Hello, panelists. I'm a little under the weather, but I wanted to ask you, Wiley. Yes, if we can have something called the people's choice, right? Which means the people can tell, you know, the panelists what they would like to talk about and give you a topic, because I have one topic, Wiley. Okay, go ahead. Go what what was your topic? I would love to drop. I'm gonna drop back in the comments after this, but I would love to know what everyone thinks about Charles and Miss Netta's surgery. Uh, do they think that they gonna keep it, or will they gain the way back? Mm. Or what do you think about Goals, the one who did their surgery possibly for free? Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I want to thank the white surgeon um, for um, <laughs> doing great work um, doing the body the way it did, and. They did really good. I just feel that Charles needs to stop eating Netta's lunch because he have a six pack and he have nothing but jelly rolls over there. But that's what black people do. You already know you're supposed to be washing your hair and oiling your scalp instead of getting all that weave 
and putting your life at risk, but you're trying to keep up to the white people. So I don't understand that. What made them get a six pack? Because they're trying to compete with white people. No, it was free. And they looking for some black bodies. Y'all better not go to no goals, surgery, knowing their history. Yeah. Well, well, my thing is this. If you want to do it, just do it by a good, beautiful white surgeon that's in, that's licensed and everything is done right, correctly. Don't go to Mexico like those black people did and, and they thought they was the cartel. And so I just think you need to do it correctly. But also, I would say this, though, to the people in the back. Charles and Miss Netta is the new thing. It was Blueface. It was Krishan. Now they're the new thing because the Internet, black people, we love promoting people like that. And so I, I think it's great. I think it's great. But my thing is, when you do that surgery, a lot of black folks with their EBT card is going to rush and do that and put their body at risk. And they're not going to look like Charles. They're going to look boshed up. Like Nicki Minaj got surgery because of a drug addict, uh, Lil Wayne, was talking about women with concrete in their body. And what did Nicki Minaj do? She went to the nearest hotel room in Brooklyn or in, or, or in Harlem, and she got all that concrete in her thighs. Now she had to get it erased, and then she went on and got her a good old nasty old Zimpic, and now she's just a stick. But she's still sick because that's still eating her up on the inside, allegedly, because Kay Michelle got all that construction equipment in her body and she got sick. Correct. She said on the show on the real, she said most of these women in the industry, they sick, but they can't get it out of there because they're trying to keep up to an image because the white people that they criticize, they're trying to live up to their idea of beauty. Hmm. I just had to say that. I, I feel and, about it, Don. I agree with Wally. I wholeheartedly agree with Wally. At the end of the day, um, something clicked in 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 the the melanated woman's head to um to be like a Barbie. So no, speak. get men though. Miss Netta and Charles is men. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, based on Wally, what I'm saying is based on their beauty standard, we've we've went to do all these surgeries and do all these things. Every at the end of the day, when you do do that stuff, the average person don't have the money to keep up. The average person don't have the money to keep up with all the things that entails that well, the, the things and procedures you have to do after those surgeries. Yeah. They don't have the means and they don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And so what they start doing, what anybody start doing, I got to find a cheaper alternative. Yeah. I, I, it, I feel, I, and, and then I also feel like when I got on the show today and people say, oh, you're defending white people. My problem is I always will defend people that gave me my freedom papers. And so when I look at my rights, my student loan debt was canceled by a beautiful white president, Joe Biden. I don't care if he was sleepy. He did something great. Obama didn't do it. He only gave me a cell phone. What I'm going to do with a flip phone in this type of country? What? Call the cops because Pookie Ray took my car. So this beautiful white president, Joe Biden, he canceled my student loan debt. He was white. So he did a right decision for me. So my point is for my black listeners that are listening to me, don't get upset because I'm defending white people. If you don't like it, then leave your job because most of y'all bosses are white. Couture Bay, you can contest it is. Most of our employers, if you work for Amazon, that ain't no black man that own Amazon. If you work at Walmart, the Walmart family is what? White. white. <laughs> so, so, so Target, white. So right then and there, it, it just mess up what you preach it and what you stand for because you're not working for self. You're working for white. So, again, because you have bills to pay. But my point is I'm echoing what y'all talk among yourselves and subconsciously living up to the white man or white woman's image. You just don't want to admit it. You don't want to admit that. You don't want to admit it. At one point, we had the Afro. We had the, the Afro. Then we took that away and we, we glorified natural look. That went away now to plastic. <laughs> we took away the net to plastic. So again, you can't say you keeping it real and you full of plastic. It's oh. all in your lips, your face, your body. You ain't natural. So how can you say Wiley keep it real and you don't even look real anymore? You manufacture, you are a plastic thing. If it's a heat wave, you will melt. <laughs> Ooh, Wiley. We could do our club. That's it. I just had I just had to say that. And and then all you black folks that have a problem with that, comment below. We can have a debate and we can we can go back and forth. But every black person do not dislike a white per person. That like it's some people that really love white people. 
especially the black folks that got money, that that's the one percent. If you listen to the one percent of the black community that make more than two million dollars, listen how they talk. Look how they move. Just I, I, I'm going to do that, Don. You got to find me some beautiful black rich families, and I want to interview them and allow them to talk. Y'all ain't gonna like it because y'all gonna be calling them Uncle Tom. Mm. Y'all gonna be talking what what what's the one y'all call me, Uncle Ruffus? What, what, Uncle Ruffus. <laughs> no, actually, actually, Wally, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the opposite. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you why. Like. We can we can go because I know a couple. So what you what you'll find is the parents are more aligned with uh with the way we live. Like they don't brag, you'll never know unless they tell you. Type thing. The kids are more aligned with a supremacist mentality because Ooh. they're growing up in a privileged environment where the parents had and the parents are still on their ass, like. You know, we, we we had it like this, we had it like this, but a lot of times the, the kids ain't trying to hear that. You had it like that, I don't. You get what I'm saying? So yes. that's that's what, what that's the mentality kids, of the kids. What those kids? What was the was they with white people particularly private school, white private mm-hmm. school? Mm-hmm. So they picked up the idea of what is right, white. So they picked that idea up and that white wealth, and there's nothing wrong with that. They adapt to their environment. Like, I really can't get mad with the bonnet. You adapt to that hood culture. So I must give that same grace to my beautiful black family that is wealthy, cap the white dollar, because they adapt to their environment, correct? They adapt to their environment. What do you want them to do? Where EBT Bonnie when they didn't grow up in that culture, so you're going to adapt to what you see, good or bad or otherwise. They and adapting did. to the white power structure is the right thing to do. Don, they did I, grow up in that culture. I, I will say this I'm, I want to end it on this note <laughs> it is Women's History Month, and when I highlighted white women who I find influential that inspired me, baby, they was like. James Mansfield is a white woman. I said, yeah, but she's inspirational to me as a woman. Like, I don't just see black, right? But I'm not on my, I'm not on my Wiley. They're not. Yeah. I want to thank um, Abraham Lincoln mama (laughs) for birthing Abraham Lincoln growing up. I also want to thank President Johnson, um, his mama and daddy instilled in him to make me free. I also want to thank President Reagan for telling me not to be on EBT and to be uh, a welfare queen. I also want to thank the great President Bush. I love President Bush, both of them, oh. the I love them both. And I also want to thank President Donald Trump for instilling in me that I am an African-American and that I am a part of this country that helped build this country. That white man said it. Obama said, there is no black America. There is no white America. There is only the United States of America. But President (laughs) Donald Trump said, African-Americans, you all helped build this country. And in 10 seconds, I also want to thank President Trump because he made some beautiful sneakers. He know us EBT Car we're not wearing them sneakers. We love the way that's really, really nice. And uh, I'm working with Afterpay right now to see if I can break it up in payments because you know I'm black, so we got to break it up in payments. I'm not part of the one percent yet, so I really love I really love President Trump, and I do love the Obamas for giving us free cell phones. About it, giving us something you know. Oh, one day I could be a wealthy black man. That's all I see when I see the Obamas wealthiness, right? classism getting millions right other than that i'm with trump and i'm with the greatest president joe biden i'm with them and i love kamala harris because she's not ebt wearing she's white adapting i'm so glad she got a beautiful white husband so we do got to shout him out the first gentleman it's just the way how he smiled he's just smiled right because he white i love that didn't frown you know he really black men will not dare let their wife be the vp they will have ego they'll be upset drag her on the shade room that white man said, you know what, Doug, I'm the, I'm going to sit in the first gentleman's seat and support my beautiful black wife. Can black men, do you think more black men will have the, can lay down their ego and let their wife be in charge? Most of these black pookie, Ray Ray, carjacking thugs, they can't do that. 
put Doug, the first gentleman, at the uh, at the uh, what is they called the State of the Union. He smiled at Con and waved. That was a beautiful white rave. I, mm. I'm done because I can really show my love to white people. I'm going to do a series on TikTok, Why I Love White People, part <laughs> one. I really need to do a series on why I love white people. Why are you going to get a speed up in Vegas? <laughs> well, the beautiful white Vegas police officers will protect us. Well, I will not be shocked. That's what black people do. They don't know how to control their emotions. They want to boom, 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 boom. Instead of using their mindset like white people, they want to use their hand. It's no problem. If I get whooped, I will go to a beautiful white surgeon and a doctor, and they will take care of me. <laughs> Final thoughts, Don. There's no final thoughts. It just... I, I appreciate the fact that, that Wally trolled for the last 45 minutes. Got a lot of people pissed off, you know. <laughs> and uh and uh it just it just not nah, there's a double meaning for, for everything he's saying. Like like there is a there is a, a message behind the madness, but but I think the caller Amy, she just she was just I don't know, he said something to trigger. Of and, course, you know, because she got on the bonnet. You know, she got her bonnet on. She about to go to bed. She got her bonnet on. That's what triggered her. Because she's one of the ones at the airport <laughs> with them dirty Crocs on. It ain't the Nicki Minaj one that she got from a white person. She in the airport, holding up the line with her eight babies, trying to find the tickets because her phone don't really have good internet. So she holding up the TSA line. So again, I understand. I get it. I get it, Amy. But at the end of the day, you still going to take off that bonnet, put on your 30 shades of makeup, and go work for your white balls. So don't be mad at me. Couture, babe. <laughs> Today was a good show. April 26th through the 28th, we'll be in Las Vegas. I can't wait to see the producer. I can't wait to see y'all with the good white folk and the black folk. <laughs> oh we gonna be at a beautiful I, white hotel. I knew he was gonna turn. Around. We ain't got no black ones. They don't exist. They want to be with the white folks. Where are the black <laughs> hotels in Vegas? Is but I can't wear my blacks and government shirt. I want to. Yes. Yeah. Cause, and cause I I'm like really it like it's it. in white letters. <laughs> I, oh, I can see it. Big beautiful white letters. Yes. <laughs> Y'all, I would just say this get involved. Once you're involved in politics, you understand politics runs the world. That's your schools, your hospitals, your hotels, your meet and greets, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Because how to tap in with these good white folks is to understand the policy, that legislature, and getting your things put on the ballot. And y'all, that was the end of the show. Thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all can follow us. Y'all already know about us. Share this out. I can't wait to see the comments. Why did you pop this <laughs> up, baby? You better send me a clip. Oh, yeah. I got it. I'm going to send you multiple clips and stuff. I'm going to send it to your, you want me to send it to your email? If I have Either my, way, it don't matter. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm going to send it to you. We thank everybody. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Couture Bay, the two man and lady. Thank you to Gerald. Gerald was like, listen, you defended white people. You know, he's from the South. Most people in the South, they don't like, you know. Uh, but I love Gerald for North Carolina B because he can't, he stuck with Wiley. If you stick with me, you're going to be able to make it on Fox news because that's what they do on Fox. They, 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 they believe in that. And so I love you all. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back with some more next week on Thursday. Uh, too bad a lady. And that's it. I was going to do the Wiley show episode, but we already out of town. At a time, so I will be doing a Wiley Show episode. I will resume that on Friday. So I will try to do three hours for y'all on tomorrow night on Friday. But the after show on station here, and um, I, I gotta play some beautiful white artists. So Jack Harlow, you're up, you're up next because you are my 50 cent of white America. Love you all. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>